friends my name is bharti seth and today we will study about the accounting procedure and rules of debit and credit in the last video we have studied about accounting equations do watch it okay so now what is an account an account is a summarized record of transactions at one place relating to all the particular uh, all the transaction relating to a particular head okay say uh, we are making a, a cash account so uh, in a daily business we do many transactions with cash so what we'll do we'll write all those transactions which we are doing with cash under one head under one box okay we'll call it an account we'll say it a cash account okay and all the transactions with uh, with cash we'll write under the, under this account okay so uh, it records only not only the amount of transactions but also their effect and direction like we have studied about the double entry system uh, that is the debit and credit so if one account is doing a debit effect then the other account will do the credit effect okay we we'll studied it further so now uh, we can study what is an account so here is the format of an account uh, firstly an account has two parts one is debit and one is credit and it is usually made in a t form okay so at the top what we'll do we'll write the account name suppose we are making cash account so we'll write cash account over here this is the short form for an account okay a slash c so firstly what we'll do in the first column we'll write date second we'll write particulars third we'll write general folio journal folio okay and then the amount same way we'll write over here date particulars general folio and amount now why we written two times this side is for debit you have to write this and this side is for credit credit okay so remember one more thing this side is receipt side and this side is payment side remember this thing okay this will help you further so suppose we are making a cash account and we have uh, the entries as first we have opening opening balance okay suppose on april 1 we have opening balance now what is this opening balance like i have uh, i've started a business and i'm doing the business since 3 uh, or 4 years okay so uh, same way this year i've started the business and uh, my accounting cycle is from uh, april to march and on the 1st april 1st april i have a balance of cash which was being carried forward from last year okay so this is the opening balance we'll call it opening balance of cash okay so suppose our opening balance is 10000 we'll write over here 10000 for now just uh, ignore what is journal folio okay we'll do it afterwards so april 1 opening balance 10000 and uh, suppose on april 3rd we did cash sales so we'll write cash sales of goods so why have we written cash sales of goods over this uh, in this side why because we have uh, we have sold goods for cash and this is our receipt why because uh, because we'll receive the cash okay and what we'll uh, what we'll receive we'll write it on the debit side okay remember this thing so uh, suppose cash sales are for 5000 okay and now uh, suppose we have purchased something now if we'll purchase something we'll pay that person with cash or anything we'll we are doing cash account so we'll consider cash so uh, we'll pay that person with cash so that is a payment so that payment will be written on 
credit side of the account okay suppose on april 4th we did purchases okay we'll write over here payment for purchases account account and account don't forget to write over here account okay so suppose the amount is 5600 okay so this was the payment and this was the receipt i hope you understand this okay so now we have to balance our account always remember that both sides of the account will be equal we studied in the accounting equations that debit and credit are always equal okay so now uh, we can see that uh, here is 15000 and is 5600 this is not equal right so what we'll do we'll assume that the goods for 15000 minus 5600 is 94000 9400 okay so that will be our closing stock and uh, the date will be april 29th or whenever you are closing the account okay uh, so we'll write over here closing balance closing balance of what closing balance of cash okay so here we'll write 9400 which makes both the sides equal 1500 15000 and 15000 okay so all the crux of whatever we are doing is debit and credit what we'll credit and what will debit we have to learn that okay so for that we have to first classify our accounts okay we have to classify our accounts and we can do it with two approaches one is traditional classification and what is uh, this is modern classification now what are these traditional classification why traditional because this is an old classification okay so according to traditional classification we'll divide our accounts into two parts one is personal and the other is impersonal account okay under personal accounts we have three different sub classifications this is natural personal account artificial personal account and representative personal account so now what is this so our natural person what is natural person account natural person account is the uh, is the one account which is made for the person who is created by god the individual person we can say ram's account asha's account rohit's account any any account okay this will come under natural account okay now what is this artificial account now suppose we make uh, we made a company okay so we do many transactions with the company inside the company with the company's name and we call it as artificial person right company is always called as an artificial person so all the accounts which will make for the company will be considered under artificial personal account okay uh, you can say company or you can say clubs cooperative societies all these uh, artificial persons okay you can say corporate bodies or institutions okay so now what is representative account representative account is which represent a certain person or a group of persons suppose uh, i've made a i've made a outstanding rent account okay i have to pay the rent to the to my landlord so this i've uh, i have to make the account name with outstanding rent account so this outstanding rent account is representing our landlord right so this will be considered as the representative personal account okay and now for these three accounts you have to remember you have to learn one basic rule you have to learn this rule this will help you till you'll study commerce okay so this rule is you have to debit the receiver and you have to credit the giver what does this mean this is really easy suppose i gave you cash of 5000 say okay for whatever uh, you did uh, you did something uh, something for me so i give you a cash for 5000 okay so now you are the receiver and i am the giver so what i'll do i'll debit you okay 
and I'll credit myself, right? So this was really simple. And now we'll come to the person impersonal accounts. These are divided into two parts: real and nominal accounts. Now, what is a real account? Real accounts are the accounts which relate to tangible or intangible assets of the firm. Okay, all the tangible and intangible assets will be considered under real impersonal account. You can say uh, the machinery, the building, or intangible. You can say goodwill or patent rights, copyright. You will all consider these under real impersonal accounts. Okay, so for this you have to remember one rule. This is debit. what comes in and credit what goes out so what does this says debit what comes in credit out or credit what goes out suppose i have purchased machinery for cash okay so i paid cash and i received a machinery so in this transaction what is coming in it's a machinery right so what we'll do we'll debit machinery and what we are, and what's going out it's cash because we are paying cash for machinery so we'll credit cash okay so now what are the nominal accounts what are these nominal accounts are all the accounts which are related to expenses expenses losses gains revenue profits etc okay so what's an example suppose uh, we are making an uh, we are making a salary account salary uh, why we consider salary in the nominal head because it's an expense right salary is an expense so what we'll do we'll learn one more rule for nominal accounts it says debit all expenses and losses and credit all incomes and gains you understood suppose a uh, i've paid salaries salary was my expense so i'll debit salaries okay i debit a salaries account and now what's going out it's cash and uh, we know that cash is a real account so we'll follow this rule why cash is a real account because it's an asset it's a tangible asset okay so it's going out so we'll credit cash we'll debit uh, salaries and we'll credit cash all these will go side by side okay just learn this cram this do whatever you want but you have to learn this thing and you'll have to uh, face this thing till you'll do commerce okay till you study commerce okay so this was all about traditional classification and now what is modern classification in modern classification we'll have five heads over here okay we'll have five accounts this is really very easy okay so all these accounts are first is asset account then liabilities account capital account revenue account and expenses account okay in traditional uh, in tra traditional classification we were having five types of accounts or you can say three types of account one was personal account and real and nominal okay in this we have five classifications in this uh, we have distributed this classification in assets liabilities capital revenue and expenses now what's the rule for this for assets if assets are increasing what we have learned in the traditional approach that if asset will increase we'll debit it right so if assets will increase we'll debit assets and if asset will decrease we'll credit asset and opposite will go with liabilities what are liabilities liabilities are the claim against the financial assets of a firm all right liabilities are the payments which we have to give in the future 
okay so if increase in liability will credit and if decrease in liability will debit opposite okay now what will go with capital you know what we co we consider capital as our liability why because we are making the accounts for business and for business the capital is liability why because uh, business and proprietor are two different entities and the capital which the uh, which the proprietor is putting in the business the business will consider is uh, consider it as liability why because business has to return the capital or the profit to the proprietor okay so same same rule for capital and liabilities so if increase in capital will credit it and if decrease will debit it okay and same goes with revenue why because we studied in nominal accounts that we have to credit all incomes and gains revenue is the same thing revenue is the income or uh, it can also be the gain so what we'll do we'll credit it if it increases and we'll debit it if it decreases and uh, then last is expenses what we studied in uh, traditional approach in nominal account was debit all expenses and losses and credit all incomes and gains so here's the expense and if it increases we'll debit it and if it decreases we'll credit this was simple so we'll understand it with a small example okay so this is a format for which uh, for where we'll analyze the transactions uh, it says transaction the name of the transaction the accounts involved the nature of the accounts how effect uh, which effect they are putting and uh, here we'll write the debit or the credit amount okay so the question says anuj started business with cash 1 lakh okay so which two accounts are being uh, being talked about here so first we'll write over here anuj started business with cash okay if you're starting the business with cash this means this is capital okay so we'll write over here which two accounts are being involved here it is cash and capital okay now what is cash account cash account is an uh, is an asset account and capital we'll write capital as capital okay this we're doing with the modern approach okay so we'll classify them in five different uh, heads which is studied now what effect they are putting cash is being increased capital is also being increased so we'll write increased increased and if cash increases we debit this with 1 lakh and we studied that if capital increases we'll always credit it why because it is the liability for the business okay we'll credit it with 1 lakh okay so now the second transaction says cash withdrew cash for personal use cash withdrew for personal use okay so which two accounts are being uh, involved here this is bank and cash so both are assets the bank is being increased and the cash is being decreased so when the asset increases we debit and when asset decreases we'll credit with 50000 okay so similarly we'll do with all these transactions and uh, this is as uh, deposited cash into bank 5 uh, 50000 for opening account so which two accounts are being uh, involved here it's cash and bank 
बहुत सारे एसेट्स सो वन इज बीइंग इंक्रीज्ड एंड द अदर वन डिक्रीज्ड विथ फाइव थाउजेंड एंड फाइव थाउजेंड सो वील डू द सेम विथ ऑल दीज ट्रांजेक्शन सो आई रिटर्न ऑल द accounts which are being involved in these and uh, the nature of these accounts so here's the question and uh, now we'll see which is increasing and what's decreasing so here withdrew cash from uh, from bank for office use so one asset is being increased that's cash and one is being decreased it's bank and uh, similarly here so what is being increased we'll write in the debit side and what's being decreased we'll write on the credit side uh, say it is 10000 okay so now uh, see this uh, this one this see this transaction it says received a, ca a check from shyam cash and shyam shyam was uh, the personal natural personal account and uh, according to modern approach it was asset account so one is being increased the other one decreased with 5000 and 5000 now in the other transaction we deposited shyam's check next day into the bank so bank is being increased with uh, and cash is being decreased from us so increased and one is being decreased with 5000 assume it to be the same account okay the same uh, tra uh, same transaction and the same amount okay next is paid rent by check now rent is an expense okay rent is an expense uh, sorry write it upside and this one down okay this is an expense and uh, the bank is asset so one is being increased and one is being decreased with 6000 And six thousand. Same goes here. Paid interest on loan. Interest is an expense for us, and the cash uh, we are paying the cash. This is asset. Cash is being decreased, and the expense is being paid, so it is being increased. And uh, with five thousand and five thousand. So I hope you have understand. Uh, you have understood this. So this was all the basics. for what are the rules of debit and credit and this is very 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 important for uh, exam point of view and you have to learn all these rules because till the point you will study commerce you'll have to face all these all these types of transactions and all these types of problems so if you learn these rules it will be really very really easier for you to attempt your exams all types of exams you know your cs exam your cpt ca exam uh in your bcom uh and obviously for plus 1 and plus 2 so do watch it write your doubts on uh under the uh, comment section below and um, if you like the video please share the video and um, like it and please do subscribe my channel and write your doubts in the comment section and thank you